Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, we're going to be making our own custom stamps. Let's get into it. To start off on this project, you're going to need laser safe rubber. So I have this no odor rubber that I got from Johnson Plastics. You can get it from there. You can get it from other places as well. I will leave a link in the description below to the one that I am using so that you're able to find it more easily. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're making stamps. So the first one is when you are creating your graphic, you need to create it basically backwards. So instead of looking at it straight on, you need to reverse it because when you go to stamp it, it's going to be the correct orientation. Now, if you don't flip it, it's going to be backwards. It won't work the way you want. I will go over this in the design. The second thing is I usually cut out a wood block along with it so that I can glue it to it and have something more sturdy to press down on. You don't want to leave it with just the rubber it's gonna be difficult to get even pressure along the whole stamp face. And the last little tip here is when you're going to machine it, there is a stamp setting in the settings area of the job manager, at least with the Epilog machines. So I will cover that as well. With all that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into the design and I will show you what to do. This is the design that I'm going to make into a logo. It's about an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter in size. What I need to do from here is actually flip it across the vertical. So right now, if I were to try to make this into a stamp, it's going to do it reversed. It's going to do it backwards. It's not going to work as a stamp. So what I need to do is actually go ahead and reflect it like so. And the next thing I wanna do is actually make a border for it. So I'm going to make the border one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And I'm just going to center that vertically and horizontally. This is really all you need to do because we're going to use a built-in stamp function of the epilogue driver to turn this into a stamp. If you don't have the built-in stamp functionality, you're going to have to actually change the black into white and then the blank white space behind it into black in order for this to work. But if you have an epilogue machine or a machine with a stamp option, you can use your graphic just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and print it over to my driver. In the driver, I'm going to pre-select some settings that I have for this odorless rubber. So for the engraving, it's going to be 25% speed, 100% power, 500 DPI resolution. I am going to do it from the bottom up. And for the vector, I'm going to select a setting for that as well. That is 15% speed, 80% power, and 50% frequency. Now over on the left, I'm going to zoom in with my camera and drag my artwork somewhere that I know there is space available. And underneath of the advanced tab, I'm going to go under engrave type and select stamp. Now this is what is going to take my graphic and do the inverse of my design. So this is where it sets it up for me. I don't have to do it myself. Once you have this, all you need to do is hit print, go over to the machine and print out the new stamp. Okay, so here is my backer block, and here is and here is the stamp itself. What I need to do is actually clean off this residue. 
So I'm just gonna use a shop cloth and try to get as much of that off as possible. You can spray it with water to help get the rest of it. But get as much residue off as you can, and then we're going to bond the block and the rubber together. Now to do that, you're going to need some CA glue. So I have the Starbond Medium with the accelerator to help it bond instantly. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put glue on the back of the stamp around the border. And in the middle. Then I'm going to spray the block with accelerator. And then just place the two on top of each other. And this will create an instant bond so that it's all glued together. So this will be your final stamp. Once you have your stamp, just get your ink pad out and dab it on to your ink pad. Something like that. You're going to need a little bit more ink, so be sure to just press it down to get the ink out like so. And then you have your own custom stamp. Now you'll have to play with how much ink you get on the stamp and how hard you press down, but now you have your own custom branding. So that's how you can make your own custom stamp, pretty much any shape, any design that you wanna do. Now you are kind of limited by the ink pad you're going to be using. That's why this one is only about an inch and a quarter tall, but the bigger ink pad you can get, the bigger the design you can make. But hopefully this video has been helpful. I know that I get a lot of questions about how you machine a stamp. And if you're using the built-in stamp option, it's really easy to do it. And it's also kind of confusing if you've never done it before. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you gave it the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check me out on Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share this kind of stuff along the way. But I want to thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.